Okay, so I'm going to give you a moment to take a look at this, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating this part called the position guide. It's what we did in class uh, today for the in-class uh, WDE, in-class uh, project. And uh, what I tried to instruct from the very beginning is kind of look at your model over, see what you need to do. And uh, it becomes apparent that the base feature is going to be apparent up here on the top view. So let's take a look at this and see how we're going to put this together. So we're going to initially find the origin. So we're going to go to the top plane, we're going to go to the origin, and we're going to begin to sketch out from the origin. You always want to do that. With that origin, we have a couple different center lines. We have a vertical one, we have a horizontal one, and we want to put the origin right in the middle of that. So you want to make sure these center lines are black. They don't necessarily have to be right in the middle where the midpoint is going to be at the origin because you can see that this horizontal center line sticking up in the model is uh, not, it's not going to work for that one. So we want it just uh, sticking out from the end of the model just a little bit. It just makes it a little bit more cleaner and easier to read. But you do want to make sure it's coincident with the origin when, when you do that. So the origin's in the middle. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to start at that center line, sketch an arc around here until almost to that one, not at that one, but almost to it. And you're going to stop over here and make a tangent relationship to this line, which is going to go down here at 100 degrees, and so on and so forth. So you just begin to build a the model out. As we demonstrated in class two, here's going to be some other elements we're going to put in here too. Um, if we take a look at this uh, view over here a little bit more, a little bit closer, uh, what we want to do is we want to add some uh, bolt hole locations in here. And uh, the bolt hole locations... Uh, are going to, uh, it's going to be off this trapezoid in here, this four-sided uh, trapezoid. And uh, it's going to be defined uh, a little bit off of Model 2 and uh, off of uh, some of the sketch geometry in here too. So it also defines the sketch geometry in order to make this finish. And we're going to, we'll cover that here in just a minute. But you need to make sure, and uh, the, probably the biggest thing here is this corner of that, of that trapezoid, where that hole is going to be, is not concentric with that arc. So let's take a look at it from this direction. After we go over here with this arc, we're going to go horizontal for 20 millimeters. And we have two arcs in here. They're going to be equal to each other. And then the end point of this arc is going to be coincident with this line, but the center of that arc is not going to be at the, at the end point of that line. So that's a mistake that some people were making in class, and I'll demonstrate this here in a bit, that you don't get a coincident relationship in there, as you probably should, but you're not getting a coincident uh, relationship in there, and... Uh, uh, I'm going to show you how to avoid that trap and what to look for too because uh, a lot of people got this wrong initially kind of bummed down in class by it uh, let me show you a way to get around that and your model works for instance Lathan's model I, I changed that got rid of this arc up here reestablished that arc after moving some of these items around and put in put back into dimensions and that arc and everything worked out just fine so that's how you solve that so that's what we're doing here. So that's going to be our first view. That's going to be our, um, you might say, our base feature. Remember, the base feature is in here to ensure that we have something to put all these other features into. So the base feature is going to be this shape that we see here on the top view. We're going to go ahead and put in those slots. So as we go through here with our sheet notes, uh, we want to start with that base feature, of course, as, as we've been talking about. But you also want to put in the guide slot here in the front. We're going to do that first, and we're going to do the guide slot uh, with the pattern after that. So we're going to do that outside of the base feature. We're not going to put that into the base feature sketch. We're going to keep that out and define that a little bit later. So after that, we're going to put in our mounting holes. So our mounting holes are going to be these four holes in here. And uh, we're going to put that at the very end and that sketch geometry that we see here. We're going to show that sketch geometry as we put this together. We're going to put our mounting holes at the very end of that. So you've got to be careful about this mounting hole because we're going to have the center of that arc up here too, which is going to be really close to that. And you want to make sure that when you put in the mounting holes, you don't click on that and not the edge of the, uh, of the bowl pattern that we see. And then after that, we're going to put in our top tool guide. Again, we're going to incorporate that as a sketch in our, in our original base sketch. But we're going to use that in a different way. We're going to borrow that geometry using the convert entities on that in order to put that together. I'll show you how to, how to do that, too. And then our position set knob. It's just this image down here. It's going to be right at the origin. We're just going to go ahead and uh, you know, sketch a center line up, put in these arcs over here. There's no straight lines. It's just arcs. All the arcs are going to be tangent with these dimensions on it. So it actually comes together pretty quick and easy. And then that'll finish our model. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to start from the top of our feature manager tree and define it all the way down. So the first thing we need to do is define our materials, which is going to be alloy steel uh, bracket SS. And we're going to go ahead and apply that. 
and then we're going to go to the top plane and begin to sketch this out again. We're going to start with the origin in, in here, go with the, go with that arc, and then go ahead and sketch that after that. So let's do this. We want to go to, and you want to open up your uh, temple file, your pseudo temple file. I'm going to go to new because I have the temple files already associated with uh, SolidWorks. I'm going to go to millimeter gram second on that. Go to our materials, right clicking that. We're going to go to edit materials. It's going to open us up in the steel folder. We're looking for alloy steel, bracket SS. Go to apply and close. We're going to go to the top plane. Go to sketch. And remember, we're going to put the, our center lines in the origin. So we go up here to center line. We're going to take this one. We're going to pick up that witness line that goes out. Kind of put that in there. This witness line, we're going to put this one in there too. And they should be black because we're going to pick up the, both the horizontal and vertical relationship in there. You want to make sure you do that. If they're not black right now, make those black by applying that relationship. So we're going to go up here to three-point arc. We're going to start up here at this line, kind of sketch that around and kind of bring that down over here. And then we're going to pull that out a little bit. You want to make sure that the center of that arc, which is this point over here, let's go ahead and drag that to the origin. If it's not picking out that coincident relationship, just kind of force it. With the control key to press, let's go ahead and press on those two elements and put that into place. This one's going to be 45. 45 millimeters, so it's black. Black point up here, blue point down here, so now we can put that line in place. So we're going to go ahead and put a line between that, and we're going to exaggerate this a little bit. But we want to make sure we get a tangent relationship in here, and that'll make this line still blue. But once you put in this dimension, that 100 degree dimension in there, between this line and the vertical center line. We're going to make that 100. Now we have a blue endpoint down here. So let's continue building this off in that direction. So we're going to pull that over here, and then we're going to take a line, and we're going to go vertical from that line. We're going to pull that up. Instead of me telling you what the dimensions are going to be, let's go ahead and take a look at our drawing over here. So we have this arc in here. We have that line in here. We went over here. We need to find a distance dimension, which is going to be 240 millimeters for an ad arc over here to that line over here. So let's go ahead and put that in and we can go ahead and finish building this. We're going to avoid these two uh, curves in here just to be safe. We're going to do that last. So now we're going to put in a dimension in here. Now if you do this, when you're dimension, if you do the shift key and click on that and then pick, click on this line, that's a big time saver. Now we can put in 240 uh, millimeters in that. Why the shift key? Shift key is going to automatically give us that maximum condition when we click in that arc. You know, when it's select, select the center of that arc, when it's select an add edge with the shift key, we'll give you that 240 uh, uh, millimeter dimension. So let's go over, go over here and uh, put a line across the top. This one is going to be 150 millimeters. We're going to put that arc in there yet. But what we want to do is we want to click on that line and that point over here. We're going to make the 150 millimeters. By doing that and then putting the fillet in there, we get that virtual sharp. And that was a uh, video I put uh, up on the website over the weekend. So now we're going to put in that fillet. We're going to make that 30 millimeters. We're going to go ahead and click on that edge over here. Right click on that line. So now everything's black and fully defined as we go, except for the end point of that line. So now we don't know where the end point of that line is going to be. That's going to be uh, referencing uh, this bolt hole pattern we have in here and that trapezoid. So let's go ahead and put that trapezoid in. So think about that. It's 20 millimeters off the top, 20 millimeters off the side, 30 millimeters off the bottom. Remember, we've got to make this line parallel to that line down here. And then it's going to be 12 millimeters off this side. That's actually going to find uh, the inside tool guide. So we're not going to do that yet, but we are going to put all the other elements in there. And then we're going to dimension it for 120 millimeters. So 20 top, 20 side, 30 bottom. So let's do that. Let's put in our trapezoid. We're going to use our center lines for this. Just kind of go up. Make sure you don't pick up your relationships in here. Notice that when you put in that line, we have that witness line over here to that. Don't want to do that. You want to kind of avoid any sort of uh, relationships that might develop in there. So we're going to do something like this. And this one, we're going to go ahead and put that in there. And now we want to take this line and this line. We're going to make that parallel. You cannot put a dimension in there unless you make a parallel. You can't put a uh, distance dimension in there unless you make a parallel. Or otherwise, it's going to be an angle. We're going to make that 30. This one's going to be 20. And the top one's going to be 20. And then this one's going to be 120. So because this is defined over here, now that we have that defined over here with that 120 dimension, uh, 120 millimeter dimension, now we can take the end point of that line over here and that uh, vertical uh, center line that we have, we're going to make that coincident. Or collinear is really what it should be. That's kind of collinear with that. It's not like right on it. 
but it is collinear to it. So now we can just put in uh, our last two items in here. The last two items are going to be these two arcs. We're going to go be to, uh, we're going to take a, a line in here, make a 20 millimeters uh, across, and we're going to put in two arcs which are going to have equal radiuses to them. So this line over here, I'm going to sketch that out. Let's go ahead and put a dimension on that just to make sure we get that fully defined before we move further. We'll make that 20. Now we're going to put in a couple tangent arcs. So we're going to go to put a tangent arc in here like that. Another one in here like that. So we're going to get our tangency over here, but let's go ahead and uh, select that with the control key. Let's make sure those two are tangent. And let's take these two arcs in here and make those equal to each other. Okay, so there we have it. One thing to note here. And this is a problem before. The center of that arc, if you click on that arc, is this point right here. This point is not shared by that point. That point is a little bit different because we have, 20, they have that 20 millimeter dimension. So if you have something like this, let's say you didn't put this dimension in yet and you have that arc in place and somehow you made this mistake and you made those uh, merge together, you would think you'd have a coincident relationship down here, but you don't. It's completely hidden. You don't know what's, what's going on down here, but I guarantee you, you will not get the right mass properties. If you click on this line and that line and put a dimension in there, it's going to be uh, driven, but it's not a 20 millimeter dimension. So if you're having something like that, what do you do? What do you do? What, what, it's hard to disconnect that. So the easiest thing to do is just to take that arc and make it disappear. Take this, pull that down a little bit, make sure you don't get that interference again, and try that tangent arc again. And put that into place. So we have a tangent here, a tangent there. If we make both of these equal to each other, again, bang, you get it. Let's put in that 20 millimeter dimension. And that should make that correct. So we're going to make that 20. And now we have that in place. So we could put in that, uh, you know, this tool guide in here. Might as well do that. Let's go ahead and put that in. That's going to be 10 uh, millimeters off the top and the side. Off to the right, it's going to be 12. And it's going to be collinear on the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. And then uh, the arc down here, the fillet radius down here is going to be 12 millimeters. So let's go ahead and put that in. So we're going to start with a line. We're going to start over here. We're going to sketch that up. We could do this with the sketch fillet, or we could just take that arc command, put that over here like that, go back to the arc by taking that line and going back to where that line started, and bring that down over here, and do the same thing over here. Maybe bring that down over here, a straight line across the bottom. And then again, we're going to take that arc and bring that up here. We're going to make all these arcs equal to each other. So collect. You can collect all those together and make those equal. We could define one of those. And while we're here, let's go ahead and put a tangent relationship in here and make sure that they're all tangent. Now, another way of doing this, too, I'm not going to show you every way we could do this, but we could have just taken lines and put those in there with this line being collinear down here and then put a fillet radius on that. That would have worked. But now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and put a dimension on that. That's going to be 12. Then this offset is going to be 10. So as we begin to put this into place, it's going to get black. It's going to be, uh, come fully defined, or more fully defined. That's going to be 10, and then this one over here is going to be 20. And when we do that, put that 20 millimeter dimension in there. Everything's black and fully defined, except for this guy. We didn't catch that earlier. We're going to make sure that that arc and that line are going to be tangent to each other. Okay, now we have everything in place. We need to extrude this. For our base extrude, we're going to use our base sketch for our base extrude. Going to be 20 millimeters. We can see that off of our section AA. And uh, let's go ahead and update this. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, we had that uh, shows the position. Yeah, it shows the position of uh, of that uh, of the position ob detail in here. We'll cover that in a little bit. I, I made some updates to the drawing that weren't reflected in that drawing that we were, were looking at. So 22 uh, millimeters is going to be the value of that extrude. So we're going to go to Features, Extrude a Boss Space. We're going to go to Midplane, right? Is that what it says over here? Let's go ahead and read that to make sure. Origin at Center, Revolve Feature, Base Plate, Extrude Up. I'm going to make sure we extrude up. So it's not going to be Midplane. It's going to be Blind. You want to make sure you extrude up. We're going to make sure we do that at 22 millimeters. And select the contours. We don't want that hole in the middle. We don't want that donut. We want to go ahead and click on this contour. It's going to include everything that's in the inside of that. Now, if we go to the green check mark, here's the moment of truth. Let's make sure we get this correct. Let's go to uh, evaluate mass properties and make sure we have that. So 4735.16. I think we need one more digit in here. 
So let's go ahead and uh, take our decimal places the units after the decimal. Digits after the decimal should be three. Take our slider and put that all the way up to the top, uh, to the highest. And we're looking at 470, 470, 4735.161. Let's take a look at our drawing over here. Yep, that says what it says, what it says 4735.161. Off in the X by a negative 90.112, that's correct. Y, it's a positive 11. And Z, it's a negative 0.516, which we have. So that's what you have, should have for that base feature. Okay, so let's do our guide uh, slot in the front. That's going to be our second uh, step in here. So if you take a look at our steps over here, what we have is uh, in our sheet notes is a suggested uh, feature order for a design. So over the base plate in here, and we're going to put in our uh, guide slot in the front, and our guide slot pattern, of which there's going to be seven of them. And we're going to go ahead and take our mass properties right after that. But make sure you save your part. Do that often. Do it uh, you know early, and then do it often, just like vote in. And uh, make sure you rename your features in here, too. So we're going to start with this top plate. We're going to go normal to that. And now we're going to put it in our slot. So this is pretty simple. It might be a different application of the slot tool that you may not be uh, familiar with. But we're going to go ahead and click on that face. And we're just going to uh, kind of exaggerate that a little bit. You want to make sure it gets vertical. And then we're going to put our dimensions in that. So just kind of put that out there for now. We're going to make that 8 millimeters wide. And then uh, long, if we take a look at our dimensions in here, what we're looking at are, it's going to be this. We have a dimension between that top arc and that point down here. So we're going to have to put that on that line down here. And then it's got to be 40 millimeters from the edge. So we can go ahead and define this a little bit better. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and put this dimension in here. It's going to be 40 millimeters there. And then this one, this point's over here. We're going to go ahead and drag that down to that edge. We're going to make a coincident relationship in there, which means the only thing we have left to define in here, we'll make that a little bit closer so we can see that. The only thing we have left to define in here is that dimension that goes between this point and that arc. So again, let's take a look at that. We're looking at this detail. We're looking at between uh, this point down here and the top of that arc with that 10 millimeter dimension in there. The 8 millimeter wide is already defined. And this 18 is going to be, uh, re uh, it's going to pertain to our uh, linear feature pattern that we're going to put in. So smart dimension, shift key between that and that will give us a maximum condition. We're going to make that 10, and now we're going to cut that. So features, extrude a cut, through wall, or blind, through wall. Blind will just do the thickness that we have in there. And then, uh-oh, uh rebuild errors. So let's take a look at this. It might be actually going off in the wrong direction. So, yeah. So if you have that error, it's not going to let you do this. Make sure you pull that off to the side, take a look at that, and reverse the direction as you need it. So I feel pretty confident about that. So we're going to make that uh, linear pattern in here next. And then we'll take our mass properties. So linear pattern, direction is going to be on this edge or that edge, whichever you want to choose. You want to make sure that the offset is going to be 18 millimeters along that edge. So remember, we're going along that edge, and it's going to uh, start the cycle here at that point or that edge over here, and it's going to end at that edge. So that's going to be the cycle. So between edge to edge, when one starts, and you have that blank spot in the middle, and then when the next one starts right after that. So spacing and instances, well, the spacing is going to be 18 millimeters. And so I think we're doing 7, so I think that'll work out. We don't want to do direction 2. Features and faces, instead of going to the feature flyout, we could just click on the face. That would be specific to that feature. And then here's your uh, units down here, too, if you want to change anything. But if we go to the green check mark, bang, now we have that in place. So let's go ahead and check our mass properties. So again, up to evaluate mass properties, let's take a look at that. 4655131, let's see if that matches up to what we're looking for here. 4655.131 in the center of the mass should be a negative 89.977, and then 11 in the Y, and then a negative 1.534 on the Z. So that's pretty easy. But it's easy once you get this all together, once you understand how to put that slot tool in place, how to get that lined up, looking at the geometry, how to do the pattern, re referencing that edge, then it's easy once you understand this stuff. But for a lot of you, this might be the first time you see something like this. But every time you see something like this, you kind of remember it. And you're going to be able to apply that later in other projects and even in your own final design project. Okie doke. So what else have we got? If we take a look at our drawing again, let's refer back to this. What we're looking for over here is a mounting hole. We're going to start with an ANSI metric, counterbore, hex cap screw, 
ANSI B18 2.3.1M. Size is going to be 8 millimeters. Close fit. Now we have a couple extra items in here too. We're going to make that through wall, but we're also going to make it, uh, we're going to give ourselves a 2 millimeter head clearance. And then we're going to do an underhead countersink of 14 millimeters wide at 80 degrees. So let's do that. So if we go to features, we're going to go right to the whole wizard. Don't need a sketch for this. Not right away. We're going to you know, put in points later. But we also want to make sure that we see that sketch in the background for our base plate. So we're going to right click on that in our feature flyout and we're going to show that. So we're going to be choosing that point, this point over here, not the center of the arc over there, that point and this point when we put this together. And you also make sure, want to make sure that you're normal to that surface. We're going to go normal to that so we can actually select those. So let's do this. ANSI inch? No, we're going to do ANSI metric. Uh, we're not going to do hex bolt, we're going to do hex cap screw, I believe. Let's go ahead and read that. Counterbore uh, hex, uh, hex cap screw, ANSI B18 2.3.1M. So ANSI uh, uh, B18.2.3.M, uh, and then the size is going to be an M8. Uh, 8 millimeters, fits going to be close, so we got that. So end condition is going to be through wall, and now we're going to do a head clearance in here, I believe, if we take a look at this. There's going to be a 2 millimeter head clearance, so let's go ahead and put in 2 for that. And then we're going to have an under head countersink. So under the head of our screw, we're going to have a little bit of a kind of a chamfer in there. We're going to put a countersink in there, and that countersink is going to be 14 millimeters. So we're going to make that 14. And it's going to be 80 degrees rather than 90 degrees. So you want to make sure you get all those parameters in there. Once we do that, let's go to positions. You want to click on this face. Don't try to click on these points yet. Click on the face. Don't do 3D sketch. And now you can begin dropping points. So that point here, make sure you're not doing the arc. If you don't see that point in here for the arc, you got that wrong. Go back to the base feature and rewind to the beginning of this uh, video. We're going to click on this point here, that point here, this point here. And then go to the green check mark here or over here in the right hand corner or right click on your mouse. And now we should have that in place. So let's go ahead and take our mass properties. Make sure we get that in place. This is an easy place to make an error because there are a lot of options in here. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So when we get down with this, it should be 4566.893 grams. 4566.893 grams. And then the negative 89, 494, which is what we have. Y is going to be 10.924. And then Z is going to be a negative 1.425, which we have. Again, I make it look easy, but uh, once you begin to understand how this all this stuff comes together, you're going to be really fast by the end of the quarter when you're beginning to work on your and work a little bit more seriously on your final design projects. Okay, so the top tool guide. What we need to do is we need to make a cut on the top face. Uh, part of the way into this, uh, into this, uh, our base feature in here, in order to put that in place. So, what some of the students did is they took, actually took that, uh, that sketch, right clicked on it, and borrowed that sketch. So, what they did is they borrowed that sketch, went up here to features, went to extruded cut, and then they chose, uh, the, you know, the, the contour in that. If we went to selected contours, we don't want to do the whole sketch, so we're going to clear that. But we want to go ahead and select on this. It's going to cut all the way through. But it's going to cut all the way through from the bottom. If you go this direction on that, it's going to cut all the way through to the top. But what we really want to do is we want to start from that surface and cut all the way down. So one way to do that is just go from surface, face, or plane and click on this guy to do that. So now you can see it's going to go off in the wrong direction. Then we can go ahead and reverse that. And this time we're going to make that 10 millimeters. So that is one way to do that. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to emulate this so it makes a cut in here using the, the sketch geometry that we already have in place of our base sketch. And right down here in our front view, that's our top tool guide. We want to make sure that goes down by 10 millimeters. So that's one way to do it. Let's do this. Let's do escape out of that or do the red X. We could do this as a different way of doing it. We're going to go ahead and choose that sketch. We're going to go to sketch up here. And if we go to convert entities like right now, it's going to go ahead and convert all the edges in here, which we probably don't want to do. So in order to get the convert entities, even though it's showing, you still have to go over here to the to the sketch button to click it up. But if we go to convert entities, it's going to convert all those edges and stuff like that, which we really don't want to do. So let's do this. We'll back up just one step. Before we go to convert entities, since we already have that face selected, just take your cursor and select out here. It'll like unselect it if you do that. 
Then we can go to convert entities, and you want to make sure that you over here, if you go to the properties manager, you want to select the chain. We're going to go ahead and click on that arc or that line. It's going to select all of that and go to the green check mark. And now we have that in place. It's borrowing uh, the geometry off that sketch in the bottom, our base sketch. If we go to features, extruded cut, we're going to go down by 10 millimeters again. It's yet another way of doing it. If you go to the green check mark, bang, now we have our tool guide or top tool guide uh, feature in place. So let's go back to evaluate mass properties. That always tells us if we've done the right job here and did it correctly. So now we're looking at a mass of 40, 47, 906, and 40, 47, uh oh, that ain't right. It doesn't show that we have that correct. So let's uh, go ahead and think about this a moment. So that's a top tool guide. And let's just try that one more time. 4047906. 40, Maybe I don't have that in place. Well, I made an error. So let's go ahead and go into our base sketch in here and see what error we made. Okay, so let's go in here and check some of the values that we have in here that help define us. If we go to add a feature, we want to make sure that we're going down by 10 millimeters, which we are. And that's what it says in the drawing over here if you take a look at the front view. So let's go ahead and check our, the dimensions in our sketch. Again, the nice thing about these uh, values that we have in here for the mass properties, it shows you right away where you were, that you made a mistake right here, and now you need to go back and fix that mistake before you go further. So we want to make sure we have a 10 by 10 by 12 uh, millimeter offset over here, and it's going to be collinear with this line, which is defined by that 30 millimeter dimension in there. So let's go ahead and make sure we have that correct. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild that or go to the green check mark, go to our base sketch, and make sure we have that in place. That should be 10, that should be 10, that should be 30, and this, this is 20. So remember, we put the sketch in in our base feature, but didn't affect us until now. But it's okay. If it didn't affect us until now, we hadn't really used it until now, but now that we've used it, now it's going to affect us. So let's go back to Mass Properties and see if we got that fixed. It looks like we did, 4006.220, and this is over here, uh, 4006.220, and uh, negative 85540 on the X. That's correct, and you know, Y is going to be 10.074, and it looks like 10.074 is usually going to be off by a negative 1.344, which we have. So yeah, that gives you an opportunity when you see a mistake like that, and especially in a step-by-step -step approach like this with mass properties, now you know what you need to do and where to look exactly when uh, something goes wrong with your model. Okay, so our last feature in here is going to be our position knob. This is the detail we have on it. So it's uh, essentially the section view of our front view over here, right along the right plane. So we're going to choose the right plane for this. And then we're going to go ahead and put in these details. So we're going to start with this arc in the bottom. We're going to have a tangent and coincident relationship with that edge on that uh, bottom uh, base feature that we have. And we're going to have a radius of uh, 15 millimeters on that. 25 millimeter offset from that center line in here. So we're going to put that in. And that should give us a uh, black arc in here. It should be a black uh, model line or model entity in here. And the uh, only thing that needs to be defined after that is going to be the end point of that. We're going to put in three equal arcs in here after that of 6.3 millimeters. So if we uh, take a look at this and read this a little bit, three top sketch arcs are going to be equal to each other at 6.3 millimeters. And we're going to go into the mass to check that. So let's do that. Let's go back to our feature in here. Let's make sure we go ahead and rename that. So this last feature we put in here is going to be our tool guide, or top, top tool guide. And then uh, once you do that, let's go to the right plane, let's go to sketch, and we're going to begin sketching on that. So let's go normal to that plane. And the first thing we're going to do is put in a center line from the origin. Projected origin, we're going to go ahead and move that up, give ourselves plenty of room. Let's go ahead and put in that arc. So we're going to start with a three-point arc. A tangent arc won't work because we don't have a line in here yet, but if we put in a three-point arc, maybe something like that, maybe swing that around now a little bit and click on these two, uh, that edge and that arc itself, make that tangent. And we're going to put our minimum dimension in here. So I think if we did the shift key in there, it's going to allow us to do that. So 25 millimeters for that minimum dimension, and then this one's going to be 15. So I should give us that black line in here, that black arc, the, the end point still needs to be defined. So let's go ahead and maybe shorten this line down here a little bit, but let's take a look at our drawing and see what else we need to put in here. 
So if you click on that, we're going to go ahead and put an arc tangent over here, another arc that's going to be tangent to that one, try to get the basic shape that we're looking for, and then we'll put it all together. So we'll start over here. We'll put in a tangent arc this time. Kind of sketch that around the corner over here as best we can. It may not let us get too far over there. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here, and then one last one over here. To define that a little bit, we're going to take the center of that arc. We're going to put that on that center line. That way it's kind of tangent when it goes over. And we're going to put a one dimension on this. We're going to just dimension this one. It's going to be 6.3. And I kind of bring this back a little bit, trying to get the form that we're looking at. And try to approximate these to be of similar size. And uh, let's go ahead and put in our uh, top dimension up here too. It's going to be 50 millimeters from this arc up here to the bottom down here. So we're going to make that 50. Uh, make that 50. Probably you should have used a sketch key uh, to select that. But we're going to go ahead and select that line. Go to leaders. That leader line. We're going to make that our maximum condition. to get ready to bring that down to 50. Desire is to put in some dimensions in here so this uh, model doesn't blow up on us when we finally get this all together. We also want to have that dimension in here too that's going to go between that arc over here with the shift key. Let's try that again. So enter is going to get us back to that tool. Shift key is going to select that edge, and we're going to go ahead and select this. And we're going to make that 60 going across. So that's, that kind of looks a little bit better. And now we're going to make all three of these equal to each other. Okay, so that looks about right. But let me show you something. We're going to put in a dimension between this point and this point. It's going to be a driven dimension. So we're going to make that driven, and we're going to go to OK. But let me show you something uh, that, you know, you might, it just actually might happen to you and it happened to me. Uh, this is supposed to be the correct dimension in here in order to get the right mass properties. But uh, what we want to do is we're going to, just for demonstration, we're going to right click on this. We're going to make that a driven dimension. And now we're going to take this in here. We're going to take this point of that arc. I'm going to move that forward a little bit. You notice that it does, it moves dramatically over here from that point up here to that point. It doesn't move a lot over here. And if we were to take that dimension, right click on that dimension, go back and uh, make it driven, and type in 60 in here. What used to be 11.263 dimension in here is now 10.322. So in, in other words, what's happening here with the, uh, the model geometry they have in here, it's resolving in two different ways, with the same dimensions and the same relationships in here. So to demonstrate this again, remember that 10.322 dimension? We're going to right click on this, we're going to make that driven again, and now we're going to take that endpoint and we're going to move that up a little bit. You can see the original point down there. If we move that up, this uh, arc over here doesn't change much. But we're going to move that up over here approximately. We're going to take that dimension again, right click on that. We're going to make that driven, and then we're going to type in the value that it should be, it should be 60, and now we're going to get back to that 11.263 dimension. Kind of odd. But in a way, we have geometry in here that could be solved two different ways, the way we have sketched it up. So make sure if you didn't get this correct, dimension between these two points, make sure you get the value of 11.263. If you're not getting at it, it's the 10.322, which I think is what it was before. Uh, go ahead and suppress this dimension up here. Right-click on it, make it driven. And then uh, bring this down a little bit or bring that out a little bit. Redefine this by making that driving. And then type in the value on that. So that's what it's not supposed to be. This is what it should be. We're going to make that driven. Again, move this up. Take the center point of that up a little bit. And move that a little bit. So yeah, we're going to make that uh, move that up a little bit. Right click on that. We're going to make that driven. Or driving. And then click in the value in here and make that 60. That's the value you should get. Okay, that was kind of winded, but let's go ahead and complete this. Let's go normal to the screen. What we need to do is we need to put in a uh, horizontal line down here to the center point. Make sure you go to the center of that, not to that midpoint. Here's kind of a midpoint uh, relationship in that edge, but if we click on that, that will get it to the center. Let's go ahead and complete our geometry, make it enclosed. Let's go ahead and put a vertical line from top to bottom. And now, let's go to Features, Revolve by Space. Let's check our mass properties. So that's the way it should be. Again, check that dimension in there uh, when you put this together. And if we go to the mass properties in here, evaluate mass properties, we want to make sure we get the, the appropriate value. So let's go ahead and bring up a drawing and take a look at this. Let's bring this down a little bit, make so it's a little bit more readable, and bring that back in. 
Okay, so for the mass properties, we're looking at uh, 4398.093, which is what we have over here. X is off at a negative 77.919. Y is 13.429, which we have. Z is going to be a negative 1.225, 1 .1 which we have. So that's how you put together the position guide. So we talked about uh, how to put it together with a base feature, and here we put a lot of sketches in that base feature, which we borrowed for various different features I followed in, including the whole wizard hole and that uh, top tool guide that we put in. We have a revolve feature back here, which is the last item we put in here. We sketched that on the right plane, but we could have sketched it on the front plane too with the appropriate dimensions that we see over here in a drawing. And we also demonstrated in here how the same geometry could be resolved, fully defined in two different ways. So you have to be careful with that. But ultimately we end up getting this part. It gets fully defined with our correct mass properties. And I think we're done.